How's it going guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cup or Bust. In this one we're using the Columbus Blue Jackets. As you can see there, top players are Bobrovsky, Jones, and Panarin. Obviously Columbus is already a pretty solid team. Should only take a few trades I think to really be a contender. Uh, they do play though in the Metro Division, the hardest division in hockey. Um, 92 overall though is actually tied for the highest rating in that division with the Pittsburgh Penguins. So like I was saying, it's already a very good team, especially on defense and in net with Bobrovsky. I think we make a couple trades and maybe a couple key signings. This team could really be a contender. And a quick look here at the settings. We have the full sim game styles, the most authentic. Injuries are off. Period length, 20 minutes. Superstar difficulty. Graphic ownership authentic. Salary cap on. Trade difficulty hard. I also have my own set of rules to make it a bit more fun and interesting. Um, unlimited free agent signings. Obviously, that's just so we can have more freedom in the summer. Max five trades per year, but CPU offers are a bonus. Cannot trade picks past 2020 and then keep at least four picks per draft just to make it more realistic. And in case you guys forget, here's a quick look at all the created players. Brady Kachuk, Cole Caulfield, Kale McCarr, Ilya Kolvachuk, Ilya Samsonov, Igor Shoshorkin, uh, Ilya Sorokin, uh, those names are sorry to say, Joel Farabee, Jack Hughes, Jake Ottinger, Oliver Wallstrom, and Quinn Hughes. And on the line this episode is the 99 overall Evo Panarin worth around 215k, so really hope we can actually win the cup in one of these three years. Um, let's get started. So raise a look at the team we have to start with. Obviously, forward group's got a good amount of depth. Really no superstars outside Panarin. Uh, first line there also has Wenberg and Atkinson. Second line, Felino, Dubois, and Vanek. Third line there is Jenner, Dubinsky, Borkstrand. And then fourth is Anderson, Latestu, and Milano. On D though, very solid. Wrensky, Jones, top pair. Savard and Murray on the second. And then Colin Johnson on the third. And then obviously two in goal. We have Roski, awesome starter. And Corby Sal is a pretty good young backup. And looking at the AHL team here, there's really nothing for the forwards, but on defense, uh, we have Nutavera right now actually in the AHL. He's good enough to be in the NHL. And then we also have Carlson here, very good prospect, 20 years old, 26 overall, medium top four. So I feel like both these guys could probably make the NHL next year. Maybe even call Nutavera up this year if we make a trade. Uh, I'm going to see what's out there. And for my first trade, guys, I'm actually trying to get David Perron from the Vegas Golden Knights. 84 overall, solid winger, on the block, only making $3.75 million for this year. I'm trying to get rid of Felino's contract, 5.5 for the next four years. 82 overall, kind of a bit of an overpayment. Uh, trading two prospects, both with top line four potential. Somehow this guy's got four years left. That doesn't even make sense. But uh, the value's on our side. We'll see if they say yes. Perron is on the block. And they do say yes. I think that's a very good trade. And after trading away Felino, we actually have $8 million in cap space. So can easily sign Kovalchuk here. Um, I'll give him three million to make sure we uh, outbid any other team, and we'll still have five million in cap space to use at the deadline or for whatever else. So Kovalchuk did end up signing with us, and after that signing and trade, uh, here's a look at the new forward group. We got Panarin, Wenberg, Perron on the first line, Vanek, Dubois, and Kovalchuk on the second. Atkinson, Dubinsky, Brookstrand on the third, and then Anderson, Jenner, and Milano on the fourth. So a lot of good depth here. Uh, very interested to see how this team does. We're gonna start the sim now and just hope for the best. I just got a trail from the Devils. They want to give me Grabner in a fourth for Abramov a sixth and a seventh, but Abramov's a pretty solid prospect. I'd rather hold on to him for right now and see how much he grows. And I'm getting another trail for now. This one's from the Islanders. They want to give me Josh Bailey, Clutterbuck, and a fourth for Carlson and Abramov. So our two best prospects for Bailey, who's a good forward, but Clutterbuck is basically just like taking his contract on. I'm going to say no. Uh, we're currently 12 and 9 here in November. We actually started out the season 10 and 2, so since then have not had a good month in November. Like October was amazing, so hopefully kind of evens out here. And we're not at the deadline, guys, with a record of 38, 21, and 3, so pretty solid here. Uh, 79 points at the deadline. I probably have a good chance here to be first in the division. Also curious to see who the leading scorer is. Probably Panarin. Actually, it's Kovachuk. Wow, 54 points. He's played on the second line as well. Uh, we're actually second place in the division, though, four behind Penguins. So we can still make four trades. We only made one at the beginning of the season. I'm uh, going to see what's out there. Definitely would like to boost this team, try to make a playoff run. So right here, guys, trying to make a big trade with the Islanders to get Josh Bailey currently on the block. Um, 85 overall left winger. Could also play center. He's got 79 faceoffs. Would probably be really solid on that second line behind Wenberg. Um, offering them Jenner currently on the fourth line for us. But he's got a decent amount of value as he is pretty young with medium top six. Um, Ian Cole here they want for some reason. I can just call up Nunavera. Uh, first round pick 2019. Benstrom here is an okay prospect. AHL top six. So really not that great honestly. But just add him on to help out. And then a seventh round pick in this year's draft. Another thing with small value but they want it. Um, evens it out pretty much exactly. Mayfield's just there for the contract spot. We'll see what they say. And we're calling up Nadevera, so there we go. I think that's an awesome trade. And the next trade I'm making the deadline is actually for the future. Trying to get Cairo here from the St. Louis Blues. Um, solid young prospect, 19 years old, 74 overall, uh, medium top six. Adding this other dude there just for the contract. They want both Calvert and Latestu. Uh, both are actually playing in the AHL for us, so I was going to try and flip them for a pick. Team the Blues wanted both and had Cairo on the block for you to try and make this trade work. I'm um, adding Abramov here, a good prospect, but Cairo obviously is better, along with Bittner here, who's like an okay prospect. So if we could trade all this up for Cairo, I think that's honestly a steal. 
The value is about equal. Hopefully this goes through. Trade accepted. There we go. Because I've only made three trades, guys, I'm going to try and trade some of our worst prospects of the stars. Uh, just to get a couple late-round picks. All these guys have AHL potential, and they're signed for longer than a year. Going to try and get a fourth and a fifth. And they say no. Hopefully, we can at least get a fourth back. And we can. There we go. So after the trade deadline, here's a look at the team. Honestly, looking very solid now. Panarin, Wenberg, Peronzi, first line. Wenberg's actually an 86 now. So he's already gained three overall this season. Uh, Vanek, Bailey, and Kovalchuk's the second line, as you can see there. Uh, switch Bailey to a center. Atkinson, Dubois, and Borkstrand's the third line. And then we have Anderson, Dubinsky, Milano on the fourth. So... A lot of good depth there. Defense only change, I think, because Vera in place of Cole. Obviously, Bobrovsky still in net. So, uh, we'll keep Simmon here. Hopefully, the team continues to do well. and we'll make a run for that Stanley Cup. And we're now at the end of the season, guys. We have a record of 47, 30, and 5. So, 99 points. Hopefully, it's enough to be in the playoffs. I think it should be. Although, the Metro is tough, so you never know. Um, let's see here. Yeah, second place, okay. Uh, Pittsburgh, though, had 107. We're tied with Philly. And then Josh Bailey, actually, the guy we traded for, leading scorer on the team. Um, I think we had a ton of guys having very good years, though, so we'll see here. Um, yeah, Kovalchuk, 71. I don't get that as an 83 on the second line. I think all the dude does is score. Yeah, 41 goals. Uh, Perron, very good season as well, 66. Really happy with that trade. Uh, we'd love to get him cheap. Uh, if not, I still like got rid of Felino's contract, so it's a win-win either way. Uh, Vanek there, really good season as well. Uh, Dubois, I can't believe he hasn't grown. Like I've seen him grow to an 83 before first season. He's got 53 points. That's very good for an 80. Uh, Wenberg as well, 52. Same with Seth Jones, that's very good for defensemen. Panarin at 50. Uh, then a pretty big drop off there. Atkinson, Dubinsky, but still um, not too bad. We'll take a look here. Bobrovsky stats. Uh, all right, so six shutouts. Save percentage could have been better. Goals against also could have been better, but still not too bad. And Ovechkin actually led the entire league in points with 95 as well. He had 54 goals, so probably one Maurice Richard, Wheeler right behind him. Uh, then you had Giroux, Backstrom, Tavares. We'll see here with Kovalchuk. I think he probably pretty close to Ovi with goals. Oh, he's fourth actually in goals. So yeah, that was really good. I'm um, trying to see here if there's any new names. Looks to be mostly the same. Actually, Trocek, that's pretty surprising. He's usually not that high up there. And I'm guessing Pittsburgh may have won the President's Trophy again. They just seem to always do so well. Actually, no, Winnipeg Jets there beat them out by a point. Chicago and Nashville actually tied the Penguins. So the West is stacked. We'll see here. Did Detroit get last? No, Buffalo Last place there, Detroit uh, was one win above Dallas, actually, third last. That's pretty surprising. And the first round, guys, were actually matched up with the Flyers. Their first line there is Simmons, Drew, Voracek, so a very solid first line. Uh, Raffle, Couturier, and Reed on the second. Lawton, Konechny, and Weiss on the third. With Laterra, Filipula, and Patrick on the fourth. No idea why they have Nolan Patrick stuck on the fourth line wing when he's a center and has the potential. Also, Laterra here now is 76. Not looking good for him. Defense is basically the top pair of Ghost and Provorov. After that, it's very bad. And then, of course, for goalies there, yeah, they have Elliott and Neuvirth. So we should be able to beat this team. Uh, let's find out. And from now on in the playoffs, guys, I'm just going to sim game by game until the Stanley Cup Finals. I feel like otherwise it takes a little too long, especially if we just get knocked out in the second round or whatever. Uh, so right here, not a good start. We're, we won the first game, but now we're down 2-1. Uh, to one. Hopefully we can bounce back here, though. Not another loss. Okay, there we go. Oh, my gosh. So a round one exit to the Flyers. I was hoping for a lot better result than that. And the draft results just came in, guys. The Islanders are actually picking first overall. I wonder if maybe Tavares will be available in free agency because of that. Uh, Buffalo second, Detroit third. As you can see here, the Tampa Bay Lightning are your 2018 Stanley Cup champions. I have a feeling there's a very good chance we'll be seeing this in real life. Um, obviously, Winnipeg Jets that won the President's Trophy, and Chicago is actually who Tampa Bay took out in the final. Player awards here, Obi with the Art Ross and the Hart. Uh, James Norris went to Subban. Lady Bing there to Giroux. Calder to Besser. Conn Smythe to Vasilevsky. Uh, Rene with the Vesna, Murray with the William M. Jennings, uh, Merrill there with the Bill Masterson, Bergeron with the Selkie, Ovi with the Ted Lindsay, and the Maurice Richard. And then a quick look here at the AHL awards. I don't think our team won any as we didn't make the playoffs. I really didn't have any great players in the AHL. Looks like a lot of actually kind of like veteran players won awards. For some reason, Morazic was in the AHL, and he won the uh, best goalie in the AHL, which I mean, I hope he would if he was playing uh, in that league. So our first pick of the draft, guys, is pick number 22, and Buffalo's offering me Ocposo and Molson for the pick. Basically, it's just a salary dump for them, losing $11 million. Definitely going to decline that. Um, now, Edmonton wants a salary dump, Lucic, and some other stuff. Again, just going to say no here. I'd rather use that to resign our guys and maybe get a free agent. Zetterberg also is not worth the first round pick. I'm really hoping that Dobson's still available. He's got high top 4D, usually goes late first round. He actually has more value than a late first round pick, so we're basically just going to upgrade that first round pick and then probably end up trading him. Um, let me see if he is available. Axel Thomas here, he's uh, top six. I know that for sure. There's no adoption. So yeah, we're going to take him. I think uh, there's no other player with more value, at least that we know of. There might be a medium elite, but 
that'd be a huge risk. Also, as you guys can see right there, Koka Niemi went one pick before. He's got medium top six. We're just going to take a look here at the top 10. Dallin, obviously, first. Then Sveshnikov, Kachuk, third. And he's actually a 77 out of the draft. He always ranges between, like, 74 and 77 for whatever reason. Zadina, four. Hughes, five. Wallstrom, six. Bouchard, seven. Bockfist, eight. Valino, nine. Farabee, ten. It's weird. Like, Valino can go as high as, I think, three. And as late as you can see here is nine. It's really interesting to see just kind of when he gets taken. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Vegas is now offering me Felino back uh, for a second and a third. Obviously going to decline that. Uh, Edmonton again trying to give me Lucic. Like obviously I don't want their salary dump. I really wish they would like stop offering me him. Uh, so we have a late second. I don't think we have a third round pick. I could be wrong about that. I'm pretty sure we don't though. Um, so I could potentially take a goalie here. Skarik, he could be medium elite, you never know. Rodriguez, that we know for sure, though, is starter. Um, this is tough. I think we're going to play it safe here and just take Rodriguez. Um, that Skarik guy could be elite, but probably just a starter potential. So we actually do have a third round pick, guys. I'm thinking with this pick, I'm going to take Cot, and then I'll probably take that Sodergren guy, who our scouts are saying has medium top six. Um, we know Cot, though, has low elite. Hopefully that Sodergren guy is, like, a low top six, that'd be pretty awesome. I just noticed that Popovich is still available. He always seems to fall. So I'm going to take him right now. As we actually had pick number three in the fourth round. Um, that was the Dallas pick. Hopefully we can still get that other guy there with our fourth round pick. Um, I think he was projected to go sixth round. So he should still be available. And unfortunately, somebody took him. That sucks. Uh, there's a couple D-men there. High top six. But I actually saw a goalie who kind of piqued my interest. Maybe he could be good. This goalie here, Kegordov. I'm hoping... Could be a beast. Somebody said take a guy that has low potential and maybe he'll be even higher. And low starter. That's not too bad for the sixth round. I just checked Sodergren, who we missed out on, was only a low top nine, so not too upset. And the draft is now complete, guys. I would say it was pretty solid. Just noticed, too, it said Zetterberg got traded to the LA Kings. Cannot believe the Red Wings did that, but every single one of our picks was solid, so I'm very happy. So now throughout the resign phase, we have 17.5 million in cap space. Um, one thing that's cool, Bailey's an 87 now. He gained two overall. Jones is also up one to an 89. Same with Rowenski to an 87. Uh, Peron, though, Kolchuk, and Vanek, all of our UFA forwards don't want to re-sign with us, so if we want to keep them, it's basically just better to wait until free agency and then try and outbid other teams, as right now it honestly costs us more to sign them. Uh, so for centers here, it looks like everybody's locked up, not really worth signing those two guys in the 50s. Uh, Milano, obviously want to keep, he'd be a solid fourth line forward. Let's see here, two years, maybe he'll take 1.1. Um, definitely going to have some money to spend, I think, this free agency. Workstrand here, same thing. Okay, 1.8 is kind of expensive for him. We'll see if he takes like 1.6. Uh, defense here, Murray obviously is a big part of this core. Two years at 4.4. Um, one year at 3.4. Maybe we could do that. That's pretty cheap. Let's see if maybe he'll take like 3.2 would give us more money this year. Um, Savard's making 4.2 as an 81. Honestly, going to try and trade him. Nutavera is making 2.7 as a 79. I did not realize that they had him extended already. That's so much money. Like, some terrible contracts on this team I didn't even realize. Both those guys are terrible. Johnson's now a 78. I'm going to let him go. Atkinson here actually dropped an overall to an 81. He's making 5.8. I don't know if I'll even be able to trade him. I'm going to try. Uh, I think I can probably. Dubinsky here is an 80 making 5.8. That's so bad. Um, sh if I bought him out, we'd save $4 million. I think I think I'd buy him out. Like That's just so much money. Um, it's, I could easily sign an 80 for so much less than that, or even a 79 with potential. Again, lots of bad contracts. Luckily, though, goalies, both are locked up. Definitely going to try and trade Corpy Salo here. Uh, Merzlikin's a good AHL starter. I'll keep him. Zakoff, though, we're going to let go. All right, guys, so everybody, we made an offer on sign, apart from those three UFA forwards. Uh, we're not free agency, hoping for some big names. John Carlson's there. We could make an offer on him. Thing is, he'd be playing, like, second line behind Seth Jones, but... I mean, still, that'd be such a sick top four. Like, Rowenski, Jones, Carlson, and Murray. I feel like we have to try. And then I'd like to keep one of those forwards. Perron wants 6.2 million, though. That seems like way too much money. Uh, Kolvachuk even at 4.5. Fiala is an RFA. I would love to trade, actually, for Fiala. Um, he's young. I think we could maybe pull that off. So, I'm going to give Carlson an offer. We're going to try and trade for Fiala. Check goalies here, see if there's a good backup, because we want to try and uh, get Corpy Salo involved in a trade. Um, looks like there are some decent backups as well. And we do have a few open contract spots. We're going to make some offers here on some decent AHL players. Uh, maybe they can turn into something. Nobody actually gave Samuelson an offer ever. Uh, Dilla Rose, 23.74. He's usually a decent AHL guy. Uh, Sokolov, he'll usually end up being like mid-70 or something. Ryan Murphy, uh, he wouldn't be too bad, I guess. Just maybe help out the AHL team. 
2573, that guy kind of sucks. Uh, this guy here, though, Renan, 2062, that's pretty solid. And for goalies here, I'm thinking Bernie would be a nice backup, 82 overall, wants 1.8. Seems pretty fair off from 1.85. Also, I am going to give John Carlson an offer. I mean, we might as well. We have the cap space. No reason not to make him an offer. I was hoping Tavares would be available, but I'll settle for John Carlson. 6.3. Last time we gave him, like, 7.5. That's probably too much. Let's try, like... 6.75 hopefully that's enough where we outbid everybody and i am going to try and bring back kolvachuk as he seems to be the best deal here at 84 overall only wanting 4.5 i'll offer him 4.75 we're still saving like one and a half million compared to perron who wants a multi-year deal and he's only one overall higher where kolvachuk only wants the one-year deal and as you can see here bernie accepted our offer so that's awesome now we're back up can trade away corby salad for somebody uh, murphy also accepted same with a bunch of other ahl players still waiting to hear back from kolvachuk who rejected didn't give him enough money. We offered him like an extra 400k. Hopefully Carlson accepted. Still haven't heard back from him. Now I'm worried we might not have uh, offered him enough money. And we had the money too. So hopefully that's not the case. Okay, there we go. John Carlson did accept. That's awesome. So like I was saying, guys, because Fial's an unsigned RFA, Nashville has him on the block, offering them this goalie we drafted late. Uh, Six-round pick with low starting potential, along with Popovich, who's got low top six. Together, their value is about equal. This would be a pretty good steal for Fiala. And Nashville says yes, so there we go. We definitely needed a forward to replace uh, the three wingers we lost in uh, Perron, Kovachuk, and Vanek. Still need to actually add a couple more. Hopefully uh, there's some guys out there. And right now I'm trying to trade with LA for Toffoli and Camp. Obviously Camp's an unsigned RFA. Toffoli, I'm thinking, could play first line right wing with Wenberg and Panarin. Offering them Corby Salo. Uh, don't need him anymore after signing Bernay. Immediately potential though, so he's got a good amount of value. And then Nunavera is basically just a salary dump, making 2.7 at 79 overall. Value's pretty equal. They want both players. We'll see what they say. Trade rejected. I feel like we're close, though. I'm going to see if I can add something small. All right, so there we go. Third round pick, 2019. Come on. Trade accepted, finally. Uh, the 2019 draft actually is really bare for us now. All we have is a fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So we really need to win the cup this year. All right, guys. So it's in the summer now. And this is the team we have going into next season. Honestly, very excited to see how they do. Uh, Panarin, Wenberg, Fiala is our first line. Fiala is up to an 84. Wenberg, Panarin, both are 88s now. So Wenberg grew a ton. Um, Atkinson, Bailey, and Toffoli is the second line. Um, I already mentioned how Bailey's down 87. Um, Borkstrand, Dubois, and Camp is the second, third line, sorry. Uh, Dubois is down 82. And then fourth line here is the Young Guns line. Milano, Kairou, and Anderson. So I think that's really good for depth. Defensive depth's even better. Like, Rowensky, Jones, Carlson, Murray's insane. And then Carlson here is an 80 now. He's probably just going to keep growing. Uh, paired up with Savard and, of course, in goal. Still have Bobrovsky as a starter with Bernie backing him up. So this team should dominate. Uh, let's just start simming and hope for the best. Just got to try out for guys from the Edmonton Oilers. They want to give me Cassian and Aginla for a fourth, a fifth, and Dillard Rowe. He's going to say no, though. Um, I'm pretty sure Cassian and Aginla are both like 79s you already have. As you can see, the team's actually not doing great right now. Um, we're currently 23, 22, and 7. Edmonton and Gant gave us the same offer. So I might actually try and make a trade here a little before the trade deadline. Give us a few weeks uh, to take advantage of whatever trade we make. I really expect us to be doing better than this. Not sure what's going on. And Tyler Petruzzi just got put on waivers, so definitely going to claim him. So I'm trying to make a trade in Minnesota right now for Parise, who they actually have on the block. Uh, really bad contract on him. He's 83 overall, so he's actually better than Atkinson, and the contract's probably not as bad. Atkinson's 81, making 5.8. Parise's 83, making 7.5. I'd honestly rather have Parise, so I'm adding this uh, running in prospect, 20 years old, 64 overall, medium top 6 as well as Sokolov, who they want, uh, 2068 with low top 9. The value is pretty equal. We'll see if maybe they do this trade. Uh, they say no. We're going to try adding Ryan Murphy here to the trade, as well as a draft pick. Um, we'll do a 4th in 2019. Then we'll have to get a 7th in, in 2019 back. That way we still have 4 picks. Maybe they say yes to this. And there we go. Okay, I think that's honestly a good deal for us. And I just got an offer from the Devils. They want to give me Johansson, Boyle, and Hayes for Rodriguez and a 5th. Uh, so three guys on expiring deals, and there's a chance he might not make the playoffs. I don't think it's a smart trade. And we're not at the deadline here, guys. With a record of 27, 26, and 9, so not good. Um, I highly doubt we are in a playoff spot right now, and we're actually going to have to have, like, an insane second half of the year to come back from this. Yeah, we're last in the division. So, I mean, we are only 11 points out of a wild card spot, but it's still not looking good. Fiala there, leading scorer, 46 points, 62 games. I don't know what's going on here. Like, we have a good team. We should be much better than this. Maybe it's just one of those off years. Hopefully, uh, can bounce back next season. All right, guys. So because we're most likely going to miss the playoffs, just trying to trade a few AHL players here to the Jets for a fifth-round pick. Just maybe we can get a steal with that pick if they say yes, which they do. I also wanted to show you guys this. Like, it sucks so much. Like, this is the year we needed to win as we had so many guys underpaid 
Panarin here was making six. He's going to want to raise. Wawenski was on an entry-level deal. He's definitely going to raise. Same with Murray was making 3.3. Um, like, it's gonna, really going to be tough to win next year. I don't know why this team's playing so bad this season. So I'm trying to make one more trade here, guys. Offering Savard to the Canucks for Jake for Tannen. Uh, he's making 1.3 for the next two years, so pretty cheap contract. 22 years old, 79 overall. Could be like a low 80 for us next year. And Savard's an 82, making 4.2 million. But we're going to need that money to re-sign Murray and Wrensky. And then probably, hopefully, just sign like a low 80 for pretty cheap. Uh, the value's on our side. They want Savard. I think this will go through. There we go. So we're calling up Harrington. I like that trade. Now at the end of the season, guys, finished with a record of 37, 34, and 11. Definitely not the season we were hoping for. I think that's like 85 points. I think I've had 80 before just at the deadline. Again, I don't know how this team uh, wasn't better. Uh, yeah, last in the division, tied with New Jersey. Not good. Uh, Wenberg there, 57 points for our leading scorer. So, um, I mean, 88 overall. Hopefully he keeps that rating. Um, or I think we have to re-sign Bobrovsky as well this season. Uh, so a lot of money. Uh, we basically, I don't know, if we might lose somebody, which really sucks. Fiala, though, 51 points. Maybe he'll grow. Yeah, Panarin underperformed. Jones did good. Parise, 44 is not bad. Bailey could have done better. Foley, I don't know. I feel like they all did okay. Um, definitely was just kind of hoping for more, I guess. Let's see Bobrovsky's stats here. Uh, he did have a pretty solid record. It was Bernier who didn't do well at all in backup. Okay, that's... Good to know, I guess. Very strange, though. And the leading scorer in the entire league this year was actually Patrick Laine with 88 points. It looks like scoring was just down across the entire league. Malkin actually tied with him, but I guess Laine gets it because of more goals. I'm not sure. Shifley right there as well. Looks like that entire Jets top line just went off. And curious to see where we finish in the entire uh, league. Really hope like our first round pick doesn't win the lottery. That would just that would suck so much. So 23rd. Chances are it's probably not going to happen. And then last place there, the Avs. Red Wings won above, Edmonton won above that. So former great franchises, and uh, now they're at the bottom of the league. And the draft players also just came in, guys. Colorado there is picking first overall, Rangers second, and Buffalo third. Luckily, our pick did not win the lottery. It's number 10, so uh, not too upset with that. And as you guys can see here, the Minnesota Wild are actually your 2019 Stanley Cup champions. Uh, Penguins there won the President's Trophy, and Minnesota beat Toronto in the Stanley Cup final. Player awards are obviously Art Ross went to Line A. He also got the Hart. Uh, James Norris went to Rista Linen. Lady Bing to Sagan. Peterson there with the Calder. Dubnik got the Con Smythe. Rene with the Vesna. Uh, Gibson there. William M. Jennings. Masterson with the Seabrook. Bergeron with the Selkie for third straight year. Uh, Ted Lindsay with the Line A as well. And then Ovi there with the Marisha Shard again for five years. And quickly checking the AHL team awards. Uh, don't think we got one. We did not. And player awards here. I doubt we got one. And no, we didn't. Look at the top picks in this year's draft, guys. Jack Hughes went first overall. Byram second. Cousins third. Uh, Surrey there. Creative player went fourth. Kako fifth. Dodge sixth. Caulfield seven. Foot actually went eighth. Uh, then this Green Tree guy, goalie, went nine. So it's like sometimes in 2019, there'll be some really good creative players, like 80 overall, elite potential. Other times, there's nobody. Uh, and our first round, or our, our first pick in this draft isn't until the fifth round. This is really, really bad. Uh, luckily, though, we do have five picks in the draft still to make up for picking so late. We have two fifths, a six, and two sevens. And we still could maybe get a late round steal here. It's going to be tough, though. So I'm going to try taking this Zamnob guy, medium top nine from uh, Lithuania. Low top six in the fifth. That's sick. And we now have the 25th pick in the fifth round. Still some pretty solid guys available. Um, Sadikov here, medium top six. Might as well take a chance on him. Who knows? And low top four. Okay, we're uh, doing pretty well right now. So our next pick here is pick number nine in the sixth round. Uh, Thorson here is medium top nine. Could try him. I'm thinking about maybe one of the goalies taking a chance on. Um, I really don't know who I would take a chance on, though. Fringe starter, backup, backup. Martinuk here. Maybe, you know, elite somehow. Fringe starter. Okay, that's still solid for the sixth round. I mean, I'll pick number nine, the seventh. Uh, I'm going to try taking Koivu. Medium top nine. Hopefully he's at least that. Low top nine. That's not too bad. And final pick here in the seventh round. We actually have Minnesota's pick. The 31st pick. I think this is the uh, Parise trade. Uh, so it's kind of crazy. Trade away Atkinson, he wins a cup. Parise misses out on one. Uh, so these potentials are pretty bad. Maybe there's somebody else with decent uh, left. Lilja here and Lavoie, both medium bottom six. I'll just go with the Canadian, I guess. Come on. And he's AHL. That sucks. Actually, we picked him last time. I can't believe I didn't remember that. Jeez. All right, guys. We're not the resign phase here. And we have 23.2 million in cap space, but a ton of high-rated players to resign. Uh, so I think it's going to be tough to get everybody in under the cap. Uh, centers, though, are all locked up, which is good. Bailey dropped, though, to an 85, which kind of sucks. Uh, Panarin here wants to resign, which should definitely help out. He only wants 6.3 as well. I think he was making 6 before, so 
this is very doable. Like, we could probably just keep them at six for six years, and that's actually a lot cheaper than I expected. Camp here is an 80, wants 2.6. That seems like way too much. Uh, Larson's a 79. He could actually be a fourth liner. Uh, maybe a, or he's a UFA. I might just have to let him go, especially with Milano locked up and at a 78. And then right wing here, Borkstrand, 81 overall now. Wants 3.4 though. I'm not going to pay him that. I'm just going to qualify him. Uh, everyone else is taken care of. Defense, okay, so we're going to have to pay a lot of money. Uh, Rowenski and Murray. Rowenski only wants 4.7. For four years that is a steal i thought he was gonna ask for so much more he's 88 overall four and a half million so cheap what's ryan murray wants this is a new deal 5.6 we can get him for like 5.4 this is way less than i thought i'd be getting both those guys for uh it's really gonna help us out and then in goal here bobrovsky 90 overall he has dropped one not interested in extension that's kind of annoying only wants five million though he was making more than that so we're actually saving money but he wants eight years till he's 38 that seems ridiculous but i mean he takes five and a half or eight years. I mean, Longo's still good at 38. Um, I'm more than happy to spend that. Also, Bernier here is not interested in extension, which is fine by me. He played really bad last season. I can find a new uh, backup goalie. So everyone, we made an offer on sign. We only have like three million left in cap space. So it's gonna be tough here to uh, fill up the rest of the team. And of course, Doughty's a free agent. Geez, 92 overall. Wheeler as well. Right now he's in 90. McDonough, usually Panarin's available. Obviously, we locked him up. Zuccarello, Strawman. There's actually some new names there. Um, I don't think McDonough or Zuccarello are usually available right now. Maybe Zuccarello, but not McDonough. Um, some other pretty solid players there. And then usually Bobrovsky is available. Obviously, we signed him too. Uh, do need a new backup, though, so we'll see who's probably the best option. Picard is younger than Bernier, so let's go with him. Um, we'll give him 1.8 there for one year. Hopefully, he does a little bit better than Bernier did last season. Even though we don't have that much cap space, guys, decided to make an offer on a bunch of two-way players. So Spencer Fu here, Zetterlin, Schnarr. Uh, just a bunch of forwards with top nine, as well as a bunch of defensemen with top six. Could definitely help us making trades later, or even just help with the AHL team. And right now, guys, we make a trade with Calgary for Sam Bennett. Uh, he's on the block. He's an RFA, unsigned. 80 overall, low elite. Could grow over the summer. Offer them Anderson, who's way overpaid. 1.8 million, only a 78. Plus the Zamnov prospect, low top six. Value's pretty equal. I think this should go through. And there we go. Awesome trade. And now, guys, trying to trade for another RFA. Boston has a Carlo unsigned here. 81 overall. We actually need a six defenseman. Offering them Milano, he's a 13th forward. Now that we got Bennett back, uh, Sadikov here has got low top 4D potential. And then Setkov, I think we just signed, just a random prospect defenseman. The value's on our side, he's on the block. This should go through. There we go, another nice trade. And as you can see here, Calvin Picard accepted our offer, so we got a new backup goalie. That's awesome. So we're at the end of the summer, guys, and Ryan McDonough is still a free agent. 87 overall, only asking 3.3 million at this point, which is ridiculous. I have six solid defensemen, but. I'm going to offer 2.9 to him, which is the max I can. If he says yes, like, that's such a steal. All right, guys, so right here I'm offering Buffalo, Borgstrand, Martinook, and a second round pick for middle stats. Just to, this is just to clear up some cap space to sign McDonough, as the 2.9 wasn't enough. Uh, plus, middle stat, obviously, low league potential is a very good player. We'll see what they say. Trades accepted. That's huge. And as you can see here, McDonough's actually only asking for $3 million now, and he's 87 overall. Makes no sense to me at all, so... I'll give him exactly what he's asking for, and I think we'll have the best top six in the league after this. And as you can see here, McDonough accepted that offer. No idea how an 87 overall D-man goes unsigned the entire summer. Um, our decor is so stacked now. And after signing McDonough, guys, we can afford to trade Carlson. Uh, he's be like the seventh defenseman, 80 overall. We're going to try to trade him to Dallas here. We have hints on the block, 22 and 80. We actually still need a 12th forward really fast. I uh, wouldn't mind getting him play on the fourth line. This should go through. I think both teams would benefit. And there we go. So we can actually only make one more trade for this season, but... Uh, the team's pretty much set, and all we, have to, all we have left to do really is make a blockbuster at the deadline, and hopefully we actually make the playoffs this season. So after all those trades and signings, here's a look at our team going into this season. First line's Panarin, Wenberg, Foley. Second line here, Kairou, Bailey, and Fiala. Third is Bennett, Dubois, and Middlestat, all three low elites. Uh, fourth there is Vertanen, Hintz, and Parise. So uh, only a couple superstars there in Panarin and Wenberg, but still very good depth. And then defense, this has to be the best D in the league. Murray, Jones, Carlson, Rowenski. McDonough and Carlo like I don't know how anyone matches up with that especially too with Bobrovsky in net like this has to be a playoff team this time uh, let's start the sim getting closer to the trade deadline now Ottawa just offered me Anders Lee for a first this Koivu prospect in a seventh but I think if we combine the first um, with some of our better prospects we can probably make a better trade uh, with the one we have left just got another trade offer this one's from Detroit they want to give me Vanek a third and a fourth for a first but still like I was saying I think we combine the first with some prospects and get a better player uh, but a week away from the deadline now, 41, 14, and 6. So this team rightfully is just destroying. Honestly, the team last year should have been a playoff team. That was such a fluke. But at least this year, um, they're playing much better. 
Uh, minimum, we're going to have like 88 points at the deadline, which is ridiculous. Ottawa offering me Lee again. If we win these next two, we could have 92 points at the deadline, which might be a record. I have no idea. Charlie Coyle, Tyler, Tyler Ennis, Daniel Winnick. Um, I'm going to say no because really Coyle is the only player that helps us out there. And like I was saying, I'd rather kind of bring in a superstar. And of course, we get two losses there. It wouldn't give us 92, but still, 41, 16, and 6. That's ridiculous. Um, this team should be Stanley Cup bound, especially if we add a big player at the deadline. Pittsburgh is somehow still ahead of us just by one. So yeah, we could just use one point in those last two games there to tie them. Um, we're both, like Pittsburgh and us, there's so much better than every other team. Panarin here, leading score 55 points. So hopefully there's some like superstar on the block that'll make it easier to trade for them and just make our team even better. It's so like I was saying guys, I wanted to add a superstar. New Jersey has Taylor Hall on the block, 90 overall. Imagine adding him to this already stacked team. Offering them no adopts and our best prospect by far. Rodriguez, our best goalie prospect, plus a first round pick in 2020. The value is about equal. He's on the block. I think this should go through. And there we go. Our team is going to be amazing. So after that trade for Hall, here's an update look at the team. Honestly, it's so stacked. Hall, Wenberg, Panarin is the first line. So sick. Uh, Toffoli, Bailey, Fiala is the second line. Bennett, Dubois, Kairou is the third. And then middle stat, Hintz, and Parise is the fourth. Defense, we have Murray, Jones, Carlson, Rowenski. McDonough and Carlo. I still can't believe like how good that decor is. And of course, Bobrovsky and Net. We better win the Stanley Cup. We're at the end of the regular season now. We finished the record of 49-24-9. Honestly, should have done better than that. Uh, this is around where the trade deadline was. And as you can see, I think we went like less than 500 after the deadline, which makes no sense. Like we added Taylor Hall, a superstar. Um, I don't know how that works out with the Sim. But either way, we uh, guaranteed a playoff spot. Yeah, 107 points there. Crushed it. Uh, Panarin led the team in points, 70. Maybe I could try putting him back at left wing and then Hall at right wing. Um, it's really the only thing I can think of. The D pairs are all pretty good. Hall there, 69, nice. Uh, Wenberg, 57. Bailey, 56 as the second line is really solid. Jones there. Defoli, uh, Fiala. So everyone definitely contributed. Let's see Bobrovsky stats. Look pretty good, six shutouts, uh, pretty good overall, yeah. And Malkin actually led the league in scoring, 101 points. Now 94 overall, Kessel 98. Crosby 91, Pittsburgh is going to be so tough to get through, and I think we play them in the second round. Oh man, I, I'm a little bit scared, no lie. And I'm assuming with 117 points, Pittsburgh finished first in the league, and they did. We actually finished third, uh, two points behind Buffalo. Really should have uh, beat them out. And we'll see here, and last place again, the Detroit Red Wings, oh my god. And the first round of playoffs, guys, are up against the Washington Capitals. I think it's like the highest rated team I've ever had. Uh, Washington here is 94-90-95. And we are 95, 98, 95. Like, that is just insane. And here's a look at the Capitals lineup. So, Ovi, Backstrom, Oshie is the first line. Verana, Kuznetsov, Hudler on the second. I'm not sure why they have Hudler. Burkowski, Eller, Wilson. Definitely would have Burkowski on the second line above Hudler. Um, Hagelin, Deharnay, and Ryder is the fourth line. Defense, Orlov, Niskanen, Bowie, Sakara, Yoki, Paka, Griba. So, they must have traded for Sakara. I wonder if they did that before Carlson's like contract was up. And that's why they lost him for agency, which obviously lost him to us. Holpe there's the starter. Samsonov, 86 backup. Uh, probably like the best backup in the league. So here we go, guys. It's going to send through the first round. Hopefully we can get by the Capitals here. Win the first game. That's huge. And lose the second. There we go. 3-1 uh, lead. Come on. Steal this thing in five games. Um, OT loss. We have to win one of the next two. There we go. So one in six, probably. And yeah, we're playing the Penguins here. <sighs> this is the matchup I was worried about. And the Penguins here have 95, 92, 95. So... Um, they actually have the same offense and goaltending as us, but we have six higher defense. So we really are the better team. And here's a look at the Penguins lines. Hornquist, Malkin, and Kessel, the first line. Sprong, Crosby, Sherry on the second. Aber, Gensel, Aston, Reese on the third. And then Hemsky, Rust, and Prince on the fourth. Defense here, they have Schultz, Letang, Vatnin, Mata, Dumoulin, Alexiak. In goal, Matt Murray, who's now in 90, and Jerry's backing him up. So really team hasn't changed much. Still just a very solid team. Because the series against the best team in the league, I figured we would uh, simulate it game by game. If we can get by the Penguins, there's no reason we can't win the Stanley Cup. First period, 1-1, one, one. there we go. Uh, not a good second period, uh, or third period, okay. So, lost the first game 4-1. Hopefully, though, we can have a big second game here, tie the series up. Here we go, game number two, nothing in the first. Big second period, Hall gets two. And Wenski there, I thought Hall might have had a hat trick. So, that's huge, 3 nothing. shutout win, ties the series. And we're going back to Columbus now for game three. If we could win back-to-back -back games at home. That would be huge. Just really set the tone for the series. Give us a 3-1 lead. Even this next game. Just get the lead in the series. Come on. Game or First period. 
2-1 lead. Hint's actually with a couple. Let's go. Nothing in the second. Hold on. And there we go. Panarin into Foley. Able to hold on there for a 4-3 win. I was worried they might have tied that forced OT. So we now have the 2-1 series lead. Another game at home before we go back to Pittsburgh. This is huge. Like, we can really get a hold on this series here. You know, a really good game. We got some momentum. First period. 2-1. Uh, Hall and Bennett. Gensel gets one for them. Uh, okay, so it's tied. Gensel again to Foley Crosby. Need a big third period. And there we go. Billy and Hall each score 5-4. Come on. Alright, so 3-1 lead. Three games left. We have to win one of the next three. And we beat Pittsburgh Penguins, the best team in the league here, to move on to the conference final. Come on. Hopefully uh, the boys show up here. Game number five in pit. 1-1 uh, one, one after one. Crosby Hall each score. There we go. Hall again. And Parise Dubois, 4-1 win. We beat the Penguins in five. That's sick. And in the conference final, our matchup with the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, they got Nylander, Eichel, and Reinhardt here on the first line. It's probably going to be their future first line. Uh, Svechnikov forgot they drafted him. O'Reilly, Tatar on the second. Borkstrand, uh, Gergensen, and Silverberg on the third. Smith, Pelly, Martinson, and Baptiste on the fourth. Uh, defense, they have Ristolainen and Toadie. I can't believe they signed him. Wow. Jarmelson, Gardner, Antipin, and Goshen. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if they traded for Jarmelson or what, but basically redid their D. Ristolainen's now 91. Uh, goalies, though, okay. Come on. 79 starter, Chad Johnson, and Lekkinen's the back of at 73. We have to take advantage of that and just score a ton this series. All right, so here we go, guys. We're going to sim game by game for the conference final. Not a good first one. We lose. We win. OT loss. We win. 2-2. Two, 3-2. Two, two. There we go. 4-2. Beat the Sabres in six. And now we're in the Stanley Cup final against the Edmonton Oilers. One series away here from that Stanley Cup. And here's a look at the Oilers team. Honestly, not as good as I expected. The top six is pretty solid. 95 McDavid. 87 Pugliarvi. 89 Dry Saddle. But after that, bottom six is all 70s. Defense here. Uh, Clefbaum and Larson are both really high. And then you got Nurse who's okay. And then just more 70s. Goalie, Talbot's an 83. I mean, our team is so much better. We really should beat these guys. The first period of game number one here. Uh, down to one. Nugent Lucic each score. Murray for us. Nothing in the second. There we go. Carlson ties it up. Going to OT. And there we go. Big OT winner for Panarin. Won the first game. That's huge. All right, here we go, guys. Game number two, first period. Uh, up one again. Carlo with the goal. And there we go. Rowenski. And there we go. Taylor Hall. 3 nothing shutout win. We're looking really good right now in this conference. Our Stanley Cup final against Edmonton. Like I was saying, the series that worried me the most was Pittsburgh. We got by them in five. This team is just so good. Uh, game number three, Halo, is in Edmonton. We can go up 3-0, though. I'm going to feel pretty comfortable. Nothing in the first. Okay, there we go. Clef bomb. We can answer back in the third. Or not. All right, so back-to-back -back, uh, shutout wins. One for us and one for the Oilers, but that's okay. We still have a 2-1 series lead. Really do not want them to tie the series up here. This is a huge game for us. Game number four. Can really get a hold on this series. We get that 3-1 lead. Come on. Um, not a good first. Two down. 4-1. Um, okay, we need a huge third. And we get one goal from Hans, but not enough. Okay, so series is tied 2-2. Best of three to win the Stanley Cup. We get two games at home. We have the better team on paper. I will take those odds all day. Hopefully, uh, the team can show up here. Game number five back in Columbus. Down one nothing early. Nothing in the second. And there we go, huge third period. Wenberg Jones to fully all score. Three to two series lead. One game away, or one win away, I should say, from the Stanley Cup. We got this. Here we go, guys. Game six, first period. All right, so we're down to one. Panarin gets one for us. Oh, here we go. Three three. Hall into fully each goal. Pulley Harvey for them. Uh, we'll zoom simulation here. Eight times. Come on. Three three game. Five on four power play. Don't get anything. We're actually getting a shot right now, so Bobrovsky's probably having a big game. Pull your RV scores. There you go. Taylor Hall answers back. This is old team. I just remembered that. Come on. 4-4. Four, four. Is this thing going to go to OT? Because I hate when it does, because then, like, we can't really watch the celebration. Five minutes to go. Is this going to go to OT? It's going to OT. Okay. We'll just send the period here, because otherwise we'd have to sit there for 20 minutes. Let's get the win. And there we go. Pierre Luc Dubois with the winner. We are Stanley Cup champions. Feels really good. I'm sorry guys, I feel like the last couple times we've won has been OTs and because we use like the 20 minute periods, real 20 minute periods, it would just like, I'd have to sit there for 20 minutes waiting for to finally score, which doesn't make sense. But Stanley Cup champions, you don't have to quick sell um, that Evo Panarin, that would have sucked so much. Uh, so happy we won there. Honestly, that was one of the best teams I've ever built in franchise. At least the defense 
like in goaltending. I don't know about the offense, but that defense was about as stacked as you can get. And then you had a 90 overall goalie behind them, like just unreal. And we just got the 2020 draft lottery results. Florida here picking first overall. So that means they're gonna get Alexis Lafreniere. And here's a look at our team's playoff stats. Taylor Hall there, 23 points, 23 games. So averaging a point per game, that's pretty awesome. With 17 goals as well. He went off, so glad we made that trade. Panarin there, just under a point per game. Fiala, Tifoli, Wenberg, they all pitched in a lot. Bailey, Hans, Jones. Uh, I'll take a look here and see how Bobrovsky did. 16 and five, three shutouts, 0.933, two, two goals against. So uh, pretty solid stats for him. And here's a look at the playoff tree. Obviously, you already know what we did. Never actually went to a game seven. Um, the Oilers here beat Canucks in five, swept the Wild, and then it went seven games there with the Preds. The Preds went seven games in all three of their series. So it uh, definitely was a tough road for them before uh, losing to the Oilers. I'm going to check the awards now, see uh, if we won any other player awards. Obviously came in clutch there, got the Stanley Cup in the final year, 2020, um, and we beat Evans, so you know that. Art Ross went to Malkin, same with the Hart, James Norris, Klingberg, Kessel with the Lady Bing, Nylander there, got the Calder, Bobrovsky, Con Smythe. I thought maybe Hall could have got it. I feel like Hall probably deserved it. 17 goals, Bobrovsky's stats were good, but not like, I don't know if they were Con Smythe worthy. Uh, Murray got the Vesna, Hellebeck actually got the William M. Jennings. Morin got the Masterson, Bergeron again with the Selkie, geez. Malkin, Ted Lindsay, and then Obi there, Maurice Richard. And then taking a quick look here at the AHL awards, I don't think our team won. We had a pretty good record, but we didn't go very far in the playoffs. Faraby, Formington, Philippe, I liked how he's also there. Bernier, now an AHL goalie, I guess, after our bad season. Philippe, another one, Lozon, Soderstrom. So definitely, you know, all names I recognize. Unfortunately, no one from our team, but. I'm just glad we ended up with that Stanley Cup in the final year, that team we built. I still can't believe we got McDonough for three million, got Taylor Hall at the deadline. Like those were two huge additions. Um, even with like how salary cap strapped we were. Plus we had like Parise on the fourth line, 81 overall making seven and a half million. Definitely would buy him out probably if we were going to go going to go in another season. But that's it guys for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm glad we finally got back to winning that Stanley Cup. If you did, leave the thumbs up. Also, guys, if you aren't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. And other than that, thank you guys for watching. As always, have a nice day. Goodbye.